Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. Happy Monday. It is bright. It is early. It is Westlake Village, California. And my name is Chris. I want to bring you these updates brought to you by our sponsor, Bitcoin Advisors. Yes, you can put Bitcoin in your IRA. Check out a link in the description below. That's it for today, guys. Uh, following up on Bitcoin on the daily range and more specifically the four hour range and um, it's the sandpaper range. So I, I did want to do a bit of a follow up on how we got to where we're at right now. So we had this falling falling wedge, uh, which had a measure move breakout target, which was hit to a T. And uh, now we're getting a bit of sideways market consolidation up here at the top side of the range. And we did have about a 20% move from the bottom to the top. How much was that? 26%. And that is the daily volatility uh, expansion play, typically around 20, 26%. We also talked about on the three day time frame the hidden bearish divergence, multiple drives uh, coming back from this pivot. And that is where the price is making lower highs, a slew of lower highs, while the RSI is making a slew of higher highs. Now, we will have the same thing in play here on the three day. If we do close any kind of a three day below that pivot at 29,434 and uh, well, um, that that could be quite shocking and potentially give us a move down to this green box, 27.5 or even to the bottom side of the range as um, well, you even have a drive of it right here. Um, if we do confirm this as a local high well, you've got uh, one, two, three lower highs, and that could bring us all the way back to the bottom side of the range, realistically. But do I think that's what's happening right here? No, I don't. Um, why? Well, um, when you're consolidating against the bullish control zone after getting kicked out and being back for some time, yeah, first, first pass, you usually sell off. Second pass, you usually get back in there. Um, however, a point for the bears here is three-day momentum, did cross down and will cross back up above 30,500. So bulls are going to have to take control here this week. Otherwise, it uh, looks like the move is going to get resolved to the downside. For a short term, um, you know, mean reversion play. And that would mean, you know, probably some sideways action for the month of July and a slow swoop down. Um, want to check in on the four day volatility, which is still expanding and, uh, you know, momentum is getting up in the critical zone there. Five day momentum is to the upside as long as we're above 26,400. So no threat. So expansion is coming off that. And as the daily volatility expansion play gets you about 25 or 20, 25%, the five day volatility play can get you around 40, 40 to 40%. I'm sorry, 40 to 50%. You know, 40%, sorry, 50% takes you up to that 36.8 level. You know, 55% on the high side probably gets you all the way up to, where's 45,000? 45, yeah, that would be 78%. So that would be more in line with the, uh, the Gaussian channel breakout, uh, which we had spoken about on the weekly time frame, which every time we've broken above the top side of the Gaussian channel, channel uh, well, Bitcoin has put in some pretty parabolic rallies from the breakout. Uh, the average move is about 50%. 50% would take you up to that 43000 call it $45,000, $47,000 mark. I know we're just talking in generals here. Um, but overall, Dixie is uh, Dixie is playing out the downside here on the daily time frame at the moment and um, essentially shattering the box of uh, peace and prosperity or death and despair. And we did say, hey, look, if we did come back down and broke the box to the downside, very likely going to come back down to the bottom side of the range at 101.98. And, um, you know, look for that next drive of hidden bullish divergence there. We also had bearish divergence on the weekly time frame. Uh, last week, we called it out and said likely coming down to the bottom side of the range. You also have the six month also, um, you know, which did tick below that month low, giving us the impetus for, you know, a drive down here over the next six months, uh, perhaps down to 99.50. And that does goose the odds in the favor of the bulls here for upside resolution. Um, 
upside resolution on the five-day volatility play. Um, circling back up, we were talking about Dixie. So as dollar comes down, typically risk assets go up. Uh, currently, short term, we have on the four-hour setup here for a downside signal, which we've got extremely low volatility. The green 55 crossed to the downside. And uh, this is this would be your your uh, second drive of bearish divergence. And so do we get a short term move to the downside and, and you know, one more uh, low down here? I definitely think that is possible. Um, as long as we don't break below this last four hour wick uh, with a candle body closure below that wick, then I think uh, we're OK. And it's just sideways paper range. So does that give altcoins the impetus for a bit of a, uh, a bounce? Want to see tether dominance come down and yes, altcoins should take a bit of a bounce in that case, in that scenario over the next week. Um, tether dominance down, good for altcoins in general and some of the hotter altcoins. Uh, Pepe looks like, uh, you know, it's hit the bottom side of the range about to bounce and probably tag the mid range here. So not a bad short term play on the four hour. And there's probably going to be coupled with a few drives of hidden bullish divergence coming all the way back from uh, this little guy right here. Yes, many drives. And I would be looking for a bit more of a bounce off of this, at least at least up to that green 55, but targeting the mid range over the next couple of days. Um, compound also getting pushed back does look like this one wanted to play out some more downside, uh, perhaps back down to the green 55 on this one stacks also looking bouncy looks like it wants to take a little leg up here not taking out this wick as long as we're above this wick, I'd say uh, stacks is more likely to bounce than not and it will also have hidden bullish divergence coming back from this pivot right here multiple drives so could be looking for you know potentially a bounce up there especially if we cross back up momentum above 63 cents which uh, looks like it's going to do that here on the next four hour closure low volatility momentum back to the upside would look good for a bit more of a bounce on stacks and then we've got ave and bch same thing ave hidden bullish divergence need to confirm it here on the next four hour closure by closing above that wick and should play out for a greater bounce on this one, perhaps tagging this trend line one more time, um, you know, somewhere along there, if it can't break it this time on this pass. Not the best trend line, never mind there on that one, but um, that's probably a little bit more accurate if you're looking for the next major uh, resistance level for Mr. Ave, and then Bitcoin Cash nice little pennant bull flag formation whatever you want to call it want to follow up on the weekly time frame for this one and any kind of a tick back below 247 a, a greater move down but this one has been just so bullish on the two week time frame you know a big bullish candle like that i wouldn't be sus it wouldn't be suspect to get a leg up to 376 on that one Monthly looking bullish. Uh, looks like it has continuation in the cards. So, but also it has, you know, ripped and roared. Uh, ultimately, I'd be looking for, you know, a pullback around the purple 200 at some point and that to be a greater buying opportunity for BCH. Other than that, following up on some of the underlying market dynamics and the economic data coming out this week, we got... Uh, Nothing important today, but uh, or tomorrow, it looks like Wednesday is going to be the big day, July 12th. Inflation's coming out, core inflation, CPI. Um, where's those high economic impact datas? Here we go. Inflation rate, CPI, inflation rate year over year, core inflation rate. Yes. So all the high economic impact data coming out on July 12th. So. Maybe we get a big resolution of the range on July 12th, um, but I would start by watching Bitcoin on the four hour and that will bleed into the higher term time frames. Um, we are getting into the time, you know, where on the daily you've got, I think about uh, 19 candles in this 
little pile. So it needs to break to the upside or the downside sooner than later. Um, let's see. And volatility has completely reset on the daily. So the next 20% move in either direction. 20% takes us up to call it 36,000 to the upside and then to the downside would probably be all the way back to the bottom side of the range there, um, which, you know, I, I don't think that is the more likely chance as we are now in a bit of an uptrend. So I'd expect a higher low somewhere in this region uh, before before the next black swan event. No, just kidding here. Um, next thing up. So we covered altcoins, Bitcoin. Everybody wants to know about when are my Ethereum's going to start going up again. Um, head and shoulders invalidation coming back to this 18, uh, you know, 1814 pivot right there. You've got the silver cross on the four hour. If it is going to bounce, now's the time to do it, Mr. Ethereum. Low volatility, that's where you want to see your bounces off your green 55. I would be targeting a move at least at the top side of the range at 1950. If that does break, uh, I think Ethereum is going to take a leg up. The ETH Bitcoin chart also is going to be harboring, uh, harboring the peace and prosperity or death and despair when it comes to Ethereum. Um, and ETH Bitcoin, we were talking about this bottom side trend line where was it coming in from but massive consolidation and when eth bitcoin goes down well bitcoin per uh you know outperforms ethereum and vice versa when eth bitcoin goes up that's when ethereum starts to shine and really it's got to break back you know above this pivot at least uh for the ethereum rally to start to get going but i do imagine it will start to get going very quickly when that does happen, also just, you know, it's looking weak at the moment. It's looking weak at the moment and um, momentum is still to the downside. So you'd expect Bitcoin to outperform ETH and still, uh, in, until that daily downtrend is reversed on this chart. That's what I would expect. Uh, Cardano, a lot of altcoins seeming to get a bit of a pump here. Um, bit of a pump sideways sideways consolidation cardano still has a lot of work to do on the uh, you know but as long as tether dominance is going up this one could take another leg up to 31 cents render also interesting um, double head and shoulders formation to the downside did we break to the downside on the daily no we did not Holding it up just fine, uh, holding it up just fine. So it could be in for another bounce here. Um, how's mana? We haven't checked in on that one for a while. Matic having a nice bounce. Looks like it wants to head up to the green 55 here. And momentum is crossing back to the upside. So Matic putting in a bit of a bounce here. Looking good there. Uh, DYDX, GMX, always want to have those on the board. AGIX. FET coin, um, FET, Fetty Wap coin as we call it. Crude oil, 78 bucks. Nice little daily downtrend. Does look like it's, uh, you know, about to break it to the upside. Silver at 23, putting a bounce off our green box. Gold doing the same thing, hanging out, consolidating. If the dollar does take a rip down, well, our bounce target is up here at this green box. That is the 0.5 and the 618. Let's see if this is still correctly lined up for gold. Overall, we can bring that down just a hair and operate on a wick basis here. Looks good for a bounce. And top side of the or bottom side of the box at 1988 is Volatility is extremely low, momentum to the upside. So if we do get expansion on the daily for gold, don't be expecting a big move. Gold moves like at a snail's pace, but overall the long-term trend is up for gold as people are diversifying away from dollar-denominated assets, as particularly central bank buying is picking up a lot of steam. Um, yeah, so July 12th, keep an eye out for that. The inflation numbers come out. Obviously, uh, lower inflation is going to be bullish for the dollar. Higher inflation is going to be bearish for the dollar. Is that correct? 
Lower inflation shows what Powell is doing is working and the dollar should go up. It's been a long weekend, guys. It's been a long weekend, but as for now, dollar is heading down to the bottom side of the range, providing us a little bit of a bounce opportunity. And um, yeah, we will be back tomorrow with some more updates. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Take care. Have a great rest of your week.